We've all learned about for and while loops in Python and use them frequently in our programs. But did you know they can also have an optional else clause? In this video, we will learn to use the else clause in for and while loop with the help of examples. We will also understand how they can be used to write more Pythonic code. So let's get started. Let's start off with what we know. I'll go to my code editor and create a for loop that iterates through a list. I'll first create a list so I can say languages equals Python JavaScript C C++ and finally Java. Now I'll create a for loop that loops through this list. So in the next line I can say for language in languages and now I'll check if the list item is equal to Java. So here I'll say if language equals equals Java then I'll print item found. Let me run this code. You can see that item found has been printed. Now suppose we want to print item not found if the item was not found in the list. One way to do so is to use a flag and check it after the loop ends. Let me show you what I mean. So outside the loop, I will define a flag variable with the value false and if the item is encountered, I'll change it to true. So here, I'll say found equals false. And now I'll remove this print item found and I'll say found equals true. Now. I can use an if else outside this loop to check if the item was encountered. Now outside this loop, I'll say if found print item found and I can say else print item item not found. Let me run this code and you can see that I got the same result as before. Now let me change this Java to an item that does not exist in the list for example Rust. So here I'll remove this Java and I'll say Rust and now when I run the program you can see that item not found was printed. We can implement this exact functionality using for else as well. Let me show you what I mean. I'll first comment out this code. So let me remove all of this and now here I'll say the same thing so for language in languages if language equals equals Java let me start with the same code as before so I'll say print item found so here I'll say else print item not found it might seem that I made an indentation error but this is how the for else statement looks now let me run this code and you can see that both item found and item not found were printed to the screen. Let's try to understand what's going on here. First, we checked if every item was Java or not. And if any of the items was Java, then we printed item found. Since the last item was equals to Java, this was printed here. The else clause of the for loop executes at the end only if the loop completes normally. In this case, the loop completed normally and item not found was printed on the screen. But now we can use the break statement inside the if to end the loop abruptly if the item was found. So here below item found, I'll say break. Now since the loop ends after encountering the break statement, the code in the else clause does not get executed. So let's test it out. I'll run this code again. And you can see that only item found was printed. This code works if the item is not found in the list as well. It is because the break statement is not executed in such scenarios and only the else clause gets executed. Let me modify this Java to Rust again just like before. And now when I press run, then you can see that item not found which was from the else clause is printed. Once you get the hang of it, this code is much more elegant than using flags. By the way, if you're finding video useful, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. Before moving to the next section of the video, the programmist team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easier to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes, and many more. 
The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description below. The working of an else clause of a while loop is very similar to that of a for loop. So let's directly start by writing a program. In this example, we will write a program to check if a number is prime. I will first start by taking an input and converting it into an int. So let me remove this old code. So I'll say num equals int input enter a number. Then I'll define a counter variable called i as 2. So in the next line, I can say i equals 2. Then I'll loop for as long as this value is less than num. And in each iteration, I will check if num is divisible by i. So while i is less than num, if num modulus i equals equals 0, or in plain English, if num is exactly divisible by i, I will print num is not a prime number. So I'll say print num is not a prime as it is. Now let me add some metadata here. So I'll say num slash slash i, which means the quotient when num is divided by i. And then I'll say times i. We can now break out of the loop if the number is not a prime. So I'll say break. And then outside else, while I'll say else, I can say print num is a prime number. Let's not forget to increment the value of i by 1 in every iteration. So outside this if statement, I need to say i plus equals 1. So let me run this code. When I press run, then it says enter a number. Let me enter a non-prime number like 34. So I'll say 34. And we get 34 is not a prime as it is 17 times 2. Now let me try entering a prime number like 29. So I'll press run again. And this time I'll press 29 and we get 29 is a prime number as expected. That's it for this video. If you want to revise these concepts, you can find all these programs in our GitHub repository. I'll also put this link in the video description. And if you like this video, hit that like button now and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming.